Hey guys, this is Avalo bringing you metagame update number 15 now. Um, this one is going to be mostly... I'm mostly going to be talking about mech TVP and how it does not exist right now. <laughs> so, um, this, this update is going to be covering, you know, why, first of all, let's first, first let's start at, at the foundation of the thing here. So, Heart of Swarm for Terran. Um, what were the complaints? What were the criticisms? What did people want for Terran and Heart of the Swarm? They wanted mech play because mech play was completely obliterated by a couple things in Wings of Liberty. Um, a, the, ta the siege tank was nerfed a few times. Um, so were Hellions. They were nerfed a couple. Basically, everything mech was nerfed at some point in time. But mostly when this. Originally, mech used to be viable when the siege tank did a flat. I believe it was 50, 55 damage, whatever it was, it did a flat damage to all units, um, and, and tanks could actually kill stuff back then, but then there were a couple patches, you know, the Zealot had an armor change, it was changed to light or something, something that made it be able to take more siege tank shots, and then the siege tank damage was changed so it did only damage, plus damage versus armored, so there were some changes, or there were some actual nerfs along the lines to mech play. So. So, uh, Wings of Liberty, mech, TVP, not viable. Also, the Immortal, very, very hard counter to uh, mech. Um, also, a lot of the maps didn't favor mech as well. So, but let's so let's go into the heart of the swarm. The the beta, the beta came out. Blizzard posted some videos. They they said they wanted to make mech TVP viable. They they heard everything, but then they you know, we're all seeing the end product right now. They haven't done any. It they made it. The what? Here's here's the truth of the matter, guys. Right now, Mech. Right now, in the expansion that was supposed to be designed to promote and make Mech viable, has actually made Mech progressively worse. <laughs> if that's believable, um, because that's a thing. That's a hard thing to. That that's really hard to believe that the designers made an expansion to promote mech play, they added new mech units, and then they actually made mech worse by... and So here's the thing. It's not just mech alone. A lot of the counter... There's actually more counters to mech. The faster warp prism speed, the tempest being four supply, the, the viper blinding cloud radius was increased during the beta. Um, the viper blinding cloud used to be a, a smaller radius and then it was overbuffed during the beta off of the reasoning that people weren't using the Viper, which was terrible reasoning to buff a unit because, of course, we all know how powerful the Viper is against mech right now. It actually overperforms against mech in the uh, the current state of the game. So the Tempest as well was also overbuffed. It used to be six supply, I believe, and then they changed it to four supply arbitrarily because of the same reasoning, people weren't using it, so they randomly and arbitrarily buffed it. So these are some things, the blinding cloud increase in duration and radius, as well as the tempest being nerfed to force supply. These are some contributing factors to, to, to putting the nail in the coffin in mech viability. Those things are too powerful against mech. And something from uh, Wings of Liberty, the, the immortal, that's the other thing. The Immortal has not been tweaked at all. The Immortal alone is a hard, hard counter to mech play, Terran vs. Protoss. The Immortal is one of the things that is keeping mech TVP from being viable, and it hasn't been tweaked any. Uh, it's very, very obvious from any player standpoint. Your opponent simply builds Immortals, and they have an advantage. <laughs> um, and this actually leads into my next, my next uh, topic here about mech and why it's not viable. Um, Blizzard has stated in the past, and I'm paraphrasing, but I'm going to say what they've stated. They've stated they, essentially, that uh, well, these are my words, I think that they, they hate the mech positional play, it seems. But their words, or me paraphrasing their words, they said that they don't want turtle mech to be viable, where you just sit there and just only turtle, which, ironically, is how Brood War was, and everybody loved it, um, that Terran was the defensive race. But they said they don't want turtle mech to be viable but at the same time they don't they haven't given mech any tools to be offensive 
So you can't have it both ways as a, as a designer of the game, as a spectator. You can't say that you you can't say that you want mech to to not be viable because it's a turtle strategy when you've literally designed the game so that the only way mech is even playable right now is to turtle in your base. The the, the I forgot to mention before, but the swarm host also is something that. Um, that that I should probably uh, make this li uh, like two topics in one for this meta game update. Mech TVP still not viable, and the swarm host is terribly designed at the moment, and it's it's starting to to crop up in a lot of games. But um, yeah, the tank you can't have it. You, the designers said they don't want mech to be turtly, but then they don't change anything to make it so mech can actually do anything on the map. Um, and obviously no one wants mech to completely go away. Nobody that, you know, wants the spectator value of the game to go up or that want, or wants mech to be viable. So why does mech have to turtle the immortal? It, now here's, here's the thing. It's a catch-22, guys. And a lot of people may have seen Lucifron against Gosu user in the, uh, I think it was like game three on Newkirk, uh, precinct where Lucifron went mech and Gosu user went you know they ended up in this end game of uh, mass ravens with mech against mass spore crawler viper and mass swarm host now this is the perfect example and I've played countless games like this I've won them I've lost them a few times as well but this is the perfect example why was this why did this game have to be so passive and the reason is the mech player can only turtle. The, the the mech Terran has no opportunity to really like actually attack attack. The only thing mech can do against mass swarm hosts is accumulate ravens because the raven has the point defense drone which lets you move into swarm hosts. So what ends up happening is if the zerg sees that they're going mech, they're like, okay, I'll build swarm hosts. And then the Terran player, if they're playing mech, there's only one option build up enough siege tanks so that you can survive the waves of the locusts and then slowly accumulate ravens and then you have the components you need to, to move out on the map with the point defense drone and the secret missile um, but otherwise pure mech against swarm host mech loses every every time it, it's no question mech pure mech against pure mass swarm host with vipers mech loses you cannot win that you have to have ravens so the swarm host is actually creating a situation where the mech player has to turtle until they accumulate 10 to 15 ravens. So that's not that's not Terran's fault that the game is that turtly. The counters to mech are so extreme and so hard countery that you're forced to sit there and wait until you have a certain amount of ravens. It's the same thing against Protoss. It's the same deal against Protoss players. Terran can only turtle with mech. Aside from some Hellion harass and Banshee harass, if you're gonna play mech, the only way you can play is to turtle. And why is that? Let's. What is the core component? Why do you have to turtle when you play mech against Protoss? It's because of the immortal. The immortal way, way, way overperforms against mech. It does way more than it should against mech. Um, it's too much of a hard counter. And the reason you have to turtle if you're gonna try and play tank-based mech against Protoss is because you have to have EMP to deal with the Immortals. And what this means is it, you have to always sit there until 200, 200 supply and wait till you have ghosts so that you can move out of the map. Basically any skirmish on the map you have to have ghosts with your mech army. If you do not have the ghosts you can't engage. The Immortals are too efficient they're, they're overperforming, they're doing their job too well against mech. And then of course, even further in the game, if the Protoss switches to air, then it's the same situation it is against Zerg. Now they're massing Tempest, you have to sit there and wait, and turtle, and uh, until you've accumulated 10 to 15 ravens again for the point defense drone. So there's actually, there's these catch-22 scenarios where you can't actually attack because now they have all these air units. And the only thing that counters that technically is point defense drone really efficiently. So you have to wait, wait, wait. Now I have 10 to 15 ravens. Now I can. Now it's possible to maybe do something. Of course, if you have that many ravens, then the immortal just becomes even stronger. Um, so the 
basically the counters to mech have become even more extreme. So, um, so what can, so with with that being said, what is being done to make mech viable? It, from you know the community's perspective, nothing. We haven't heard a fucking word about this. The <laughs> the last thing we heard were like some mistranslated interviews where David Kim said he wanted to buff the Viper. Now I'm hoping, I think everybody is hoping that that was a mistranslation, that he wanted to buff the Viper, because the Viper is already almost, you know, late game ZVP, late game ZVT. With Swarmhost, the Viper makes this really incredibly fucking boring, you know, the, the Zerg player sits there, burrows their Swarmhost, rallies free units at you, and then they keep yanking units. Um, so I don't know why they would be ever thinking about buffing that. That's actually a terrible idea. That's already a viable strategy that people are using in, in multiple matchups. So so the next thing is, mech is not viable Terran vs. Protoss right now. It is viable against Zerg, although you have to wait until you have a bajillion ravens. It, it's viable, yes. The games do become long and some would argue boring because both players have to sit there. Uh, but d and because of the swarm host, of course, and the, and blinding cloud, you need enough to be able to break through those. So, what could they tweak to make mech more viable without breaking the game? That's the most important thing because uh, the things that could break the game were, would be if mech if tanks became too viable, then they would be too good with bio units, and that's what they're afraid of. But so I've listed some things here. Uh, you know, have, playing mech, I've played mech in all three matchups, including against Protoss. I've made it work, even right now when it's sort of, you know, wishy-washy on whether it, it shouldn't work, but, you know, there's there's other reasons why it does work sometimes, such as the Protoss not understanding how to play against it. Maybe it's so rarely seen right now because because it is, it is so bad. Sometimes it can catch people off guard if you go mech against Protoss because they're like, wow, I've never seen these units before. Uh, but the ones that do, if you do play an experienced Protoss, they will absolutely crush mech. Um, so here's the first thing. Here's here's my first suggestion to Blizzard that I would recommend that would make mech more viable and uh, easier. Easier, not mechanically, not mechanically easier as a strategy, not mechanically easier by the units, but make mech easier to to get into as a strategy. So the first thing is reduce the cost of the armories. Armories right now um, are 150 minerals and 100 Vespian gas. And this is my next point of why mech is not viable. This is a huge reason why. Um, mech takes too long to get the upgrades because armories are too expensive. Um, if you ever watch a Terran player trying to mech against Protoss or if you've ever played it, you'll realize the Protoss is chrono boosting their forges, and a lot of games Protoss will be on two two upgrades, and the Terran Mech player will be on one zero upgrades. <laughs> not because they not because they don't want upgrades, because it's all you can afford when you play when you go Mech, because you don't want to die to to all the one, all the Protoss all ins that exist in the game. You cannot afford the two armors really early on in the game, as uh, you know as as early as you would want to get them. So the first thing that can make mech viable, or more viable, or easier um, to play would be the price of the armory reduced so that each armory is 100 minerals and 50 gas just like the armories in Brood War. That way somebody that wants to go mech can upgrade their units in a reasonable or equivalent time to the Protoss, the Terran, or the Zerg because, you know, if you're going bio-Terran the bio upgrades come from the E bays, 125 mineral engineering bays. Against Zerg, they cost uh, same thing, 125 if you if you include the cost of the drone. But evolution chambers are 75 minerals available at a hatchery tech. Zerg can get their upgrades really early. Protoss, same thing. They can get their upgrades and even speed up how fast they're getting them <laughs> with Chrono Boost. So 150 mineral forges. That's tough to compete with when you want to go mech and you can't even build your upgrade facilities until your factory is done and you can't even build them then because you need units to survive so a lot of times uh, Protoss will already have their 1-1 done as you're starting your 1-0 upgrade <laughs> with mech so that's something that they could change they could they could reduce the price of the armories 
and that would make mech easier, easier to get into, but it wouldn't change anything anywhere in the game with any of the units. It changes no unit statistics, it changes it changes nothing else in the game other than the price, that one-time price of initially getting your armories and then going into the mech upgrades. So that saves some, that would save Terran players a lot of uh, Vespian gas and have the ability to get their upgrades you know, on par with the uh, Protoss player or the Zerg player. So that's the first thing that should, that, that actually is something that should be done, uh, 100%. No one, I don't think anybody can really argue that that would, that would break the game. Um, that would simply make mech easier to get into. So that's the first thing. Reduce the price of the armory to 150, you know, 100 minerals, 50 Vespian gas, and see what happens. You'll, I, I, I can guarantee you, um, you'll see Terran players actually being able to afford their upgrades when they go mech. Um, and you won't, we won't see these... We won't see these crazy situations where Protoss is 2-2 with mass immortals against 1-0 mech. Um, that's just ridiculous. So that's the first thing. Second thing is tone down the hard counters. Um, tone down the immortal. Tone down the temp Tempest should be 6 supply. It shouldn't be 4 supply. And it shouldn't have 5,000 health. <laughs> and that's an exaggeration. But it, the Tempest should be a more fragile unit. It has too much health. Um... It doesn't do too much damage, but against mech, it's actually over. You can there's against mech, you can actually go pure tempest templar at a certain point in the game. So the supply needs to be increased on the tempest, make it such so you can't just mass these things, just one unit to counter an entire strategy. Um, that's just ridiculous. It's like broodlord infester on crack. Um, but and yet, but but mainly for mech TVP, they need to tone down the immortal in a way that does not affect Protoss versus Zerg. Because that's the biggest, that's the biggest obstacle here is, is um, toning down the immortal against Terran without changing it too much for Protoss versus Protoss or Protoss versus Zerg, because they still the immortal has to be effective against Roaches because Zerg can really get Roaches quickly against Protoss, um, and it has to be effective PVP to help break you know Mass Colossus and and to do things in that matchup so. They need to tone down the immortal against mech. Um, I'm not sure how they could do that. Um, they're the they're the balance team. I can't. I can only suggest things as a player of the game and um, somebody that pays a lot of attention to this. But the the immortal needs to be toned down against Terran mech. That is something that has to happen. Maybe make it. Maybe you know the shields make it not have. Maybe the. Uh, what, oh, maybe what could be... I, I, I just thought of it right now, guys. <laughs> Something really easy-peasy that could uh, that could actually... Here Here's what would actually fix the Immortal against Terran Mech, but still leave the Immortal very good against Zerg and Protoss. Here, here's what it is. It's very simple. Um, er, you know, ma remove the shields, ha half the shields, whatever the current shields are of the Immortal, reduce it by about half to three-fourths, Make it so that it, make it so, I would say, do something extreme to tone it down against Terran. Make it so that the hardened shield can only tank, like, one initial volley from siege tanks or something. And then what you do is, so you reduce the shields, um, let me actually look this up right now. <laughs> Jeez, but, but, but what I'm saying is you reduce the shields, but you increase the hit points of the immortal. So it has the same effective life but the hardened shield isn't so broken against Terran mech. So that's what they should actually do there. Um, so we would say, you know, have the same total life pool, but the, the hardened shield is not such a broken mechanic against Terran mech. That's definitely what they could do. Um, so definitely that would be the change to make the, the immortal not such a hard counter against Terran mech but not break it in PvZ or PvT. So I just actually... There you go, Blizzard. I just gave you another solution. Um, that's the second thing that would make mech more viable against Protoss without breaking the other matchups and without even changing the damage on the Immortal or anything else. So that's pretty simple. Um, so the third thing, Transformation Servos. Um, nobody gets this upgrade <laughs> this is for people that have never seen this before it's the upgrade that allows your hellions to transform into battle hellions or the hell as they now call it um so what could they do this 
this upgrade is overpriced. It's 150, 150. The reason they cha they added this upgrade into the game during the beta, during the beta, the Hearted Storm beta, they did a couple of things. Initially, you needed an armory, then you didn't need an armory, then they put the armory back as a requirement to uh, transform the units, and then they added in this upgrade finally. And they added this so that Terran versus Zerg, you couldn't just mass Hellions and then run them to the Zerg's base and then transform them all into Hellbats. Um, but after things have changed quite a bit since then with the most recent Hellbat nerf uh, where you need blue flame they need to do something to this transformation upgrade to promote the usage uh, promote promote the usage of it it's cool it's fucking cool <laughs> uh, Hellions transforming and stuff so it needs to be like 50 50 like 50 minerals 50 gas or even 100 minerals on 100 gas so it needs to be reduced in price and build time it needs to you know not take as much time to uh, to build so that you can it needs to be more like concussive shell you know concussive shell for the marauder they originally added originally the marauder started out with the concussive shell but that was too powerful against protoss so they added in a tiny upgrade on the tech lab that you now you need to research concussive shell but it doesn't take infinity time to, to finish like the hellion transformation does so they need to make it like that uh, where it's like 50 50 doesn't take too long to research and then you, you know, then you can transform your Hellions back and forth. So that way, you know, it's not broken against Zerg. Uh, there'll still be this time where you don't have it. And then it comes into play later on so that, you know, mech, you have a little bit of versatility in terms of the Hellion and the Hellbat. So that's another thing. The fourth thing, the Viper Blinding Cloud. It's overperforming against Terran mech. It's barely used against Protoss. It is used occasionally against Protoss. Um, but... Uh, it's it's overperforming against Mac. The, the the radius. If anybody has ever seen the radius, the current radius of the Blinding Cloud, it was like I mentioned earlier. It was overbuffed during the beta, during the Heart of the Swarm beta. So they need to, you know, put it back to what it was, so that you don't have like two Blinding Clouds covering ten siege tanks. That's a little bit ridiculous. It's a little bit too hard countering. Um, so they need to, you know. They need to tweak that and nerf the radius, um, put it back to whatever it was before because it's overperforming just like the Immortal. Um, so, and the final thing I already mentioned was was the Tempest. You know, it needs to be nerfed to six supply. Shouldn't have these Mech versus Protoss games where the the Protoss doesn't die, they get their death ball, and then they start massing only Tempest Templar. That it's ridiculous to watch. Uh, if you've ever seen 15 to 20 Tempests, they fill up the entire screen and then they have Templar underneath. It's exactly like Broodlord and Fester, except it, it's even worse. So they need to re they need to make it so you can't just make a bajillion Tempest with your army. Um, the Tempest was originally designed... The original design of the Tempest was to be a splash damage unit to deal with Mass Muta. But then Blizzard added in the Phoenix Range upgrade, which deals with Mass Muta. And they changed the role of the Tempest. Really, they got lazy, and they didn't believe Broodlord and Fester was overpowered in Wings of Liberty. So they changed the role of the Tempest to be an anti-Broodlord unit, so that Zerg can't just get an invincible army of Broodlord, Corruptor, and Fester. But um, it's already good against Broodlords, but you shouldn't be able to get so many of them uh, against Terran Mech. It actually does its job against Zerg, against uh, against uh, Terran. The Tempest is too strong against Terran Mech. So, those are some things, um, you know, bl the thing is, guys, Blizzard hasn't been doing anything to make Mech viable. They have, like, all these things I mentioned that are obvious, the Immortal, too strong against Mech, the Tempest, the Blinding Cloud, we've all, we all see and know this, it doesn't, even Bronze Leaguers can sort of be like, well, how did that work? He had 20 siege tanks in siege mode and the immortal just crushed them all. That should not be happening. <laughs> so, um, to end this, I would say if they want mech to be more viable and easier to get into, reduce the price of the armory to 100 minerals, 50 gas. That will allow Terrans to actually upgrade their mech units and that, that alone will, will uh, change a lot with Terran mech because, you know, having upgrade, everybody should know watching pro games, playing pro games, um, upgrades are really important in StarCraft 2 
in any in any RTS game, being able to upgrade your units and have them be stronger than your opponents or equivalent is very important. And Terran Mech right now cannot keep up in upgrades, can't even start your upgrades as your your opponent's already on one one. So the price of the armory has to be reduced to one hundred minerals, fifty gas. It has to be that will help Terran Mech out a lot. So that's the first thing that should be changed 100%. It won't break anything in the game. Um, that's the first thing. Second thing, tone down the Immortal against Terran Mech. If you want Mech to be viable, this cannot be such a hard counter unit to Mech. Um, and if you want Mech to not have to turtle until they have 15 ghosts with their Mech army, then the Immortal needs to be toned down. So how do you do? How do we do that without breaking PVZ and uh, PVP? you remove a lot of the shields from the immortal so whatever shields it has will still have the hardened shield but um, you know remove a lot of the shields and instead add that to its light to the hit points the non-shield part of the immortal so the immortal will remain the same against the other races but the shields against Terran mech the uh, the hardened shield won't be such a broken mechanic which it it currently overperforms way way overperforms so the next thing, um, and the and you know, that, that's, those are really the two main things against Terran Mech. But the last thing is uh, the Viper and the Swarm Host. The Viper needs to not overperform against Mech either with a Blinding Cloud. Um, I mean, that's it, guys. They they need to do something. You know, this is the Mech expansion. They advertised it as that. They design. They were supposed to be designing it as that, but slowly but surely they've kept nerfing mech either directly or indirectly so it would be nice um, if they did some of these things and we would see a lot more mech games I, I could I I would bet my life if I had a gun to my head right now <laughs> and this is this is once again this is um, these changes that I'm proposing to the armory making the armory cheaper and toning down the immortal these are changes it's, ca it's called a gun to the head uh, test would, if somebody was holding a gun to my head and said, I'm going to blow your brains out if these changes break the game, would I be confident enough that these changes would not break the game, but would they would make mech more viable? And I would say yes, I would be very confident um, if somebody was holding a gun to my head and said, you know, two months from now, will this, have break, will this have broken the game or will the game be even better? I would say the game would be even better with the reduced armory cost and the immortal being toned down against mech. Um... So, so yeah, um, these are just suggestions I can make. Um, I, you know, a lot, not just me, I hope everybody that wants Mech to be viable will post their thoughts about this on the forums and, you know, let Blizzard hear community feedback. We want Mech to be viable. We don't just want to see bio for the next, you know, one or two years, whatever it is, however long StarCraft goes. Bio, 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 bio. We're tired of this shit. We want to see some mech. <laughs> we want to see some heavy metal, guys. All right. So, um, good luck to the balance team. Good luck to the Blizzard balance team. And yeah, leave post your thoughts and comments, guys. If you agree with me, if you think my changes will break the game, if you think that they're good changes that you know will um, make turn mech better but not break the game, then you know leave your comments. Um, leave your comments to Blizzard. Post on the official forums. Let them, you know, let them hear the feedback. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully they'll make Mac more viable, especially against Protoss, because that would be fucking sweet and that would be amazing. That would make their game even better. Um, so thank you guys for watching. This has been Metagame Update number 15 about Mac TVP viability, how it's not viable right now. You know, in some ways it could be more viable. Um, it's time the developers actually stepped in. You know, it's time they stepped in here and, and did something to make mech uh, more viable. Um, because right now, nothing will change the way it currently is. With the players have done everything they can to, you know, to play mech against Protoss and stuff. And <sighs> it, it, what we're all hoping is that it doesn't become. A running joke like oh he went mech he's gonna lose and that's what it currently is so see you guys later peace thanks for watching leave comments everybody